Hello everybody, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. My name's Laura, if you don't know me already. And tonight I am going to be making a Raspberry Ripple Bakewell Tray Bake. Call it what you wish. Um, this recipe that I'm doing tonight is part of the Tray Bake series that I'm doing at the moment. And, sorry if my is <laughs> on. Um, and yeah, this you can do this with any flavour that you want to. So I'm going to show you the recipe tonight, but you can choose any flavour. So if you want to do the traditional cherry bake well, um, I'm doing a raspberry ripple bake well, vanilla bake well, then you can do whichever one you want. So that's what I'm doing tonight. It's very quiet in the kitchen tonight. It's just me and Antonia on camera. So hello, Antonia. Hello, and hello to everyone who's joined us. Hi, Michelle Quinn. Hi, Kath. Hi, Harlem Horses. Hi, Donna. Hi, Geraldine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, well, hi, everyone. Hi, there were everyone. so many people <laughs> popping out. I was wondering when she was going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of people to remember. So thank you for joining me tonight. It's good to be back in the kitchen. I have had a few weeks away um, I had a few swaps in swaps out um, but I'm back tonight and I'm going to be back again next week as well and um, Carol and John are on holiday enjoying themselves hopefully she's not going to pop on tonight she is meant to be out so hopefully she just keeps out of it and enjoys a holiday but we'll see won't we you know what she's like um, <laughs> <laughs> who knows I'm not watching you Laura but you know she probably will and um, so yeah this recipe is already on the website. It's actually a recipe that I did a couple of years ago, um, but tonight I'm going to do it with a pastry bottom. Now, that is entirely up to you. I just thought I'd give you the two options. So the recipe is on the website at the moment without the pastry um, base, but you can do it with or without. There's just an extra bit at the bottom of the recipe now that will say if you wish to do it um, with the pastry. Just It's just... Um, a sweet pastry um, bottom so I just thought I'd add that tonight just to mix up a little bit and I'm using whipping it up tonight so as I said I'm doing raspberry ripple flavour which we've got here and um, yeah I hope that you enjoy the recipe hope that you enjoy it as much as my other tray bakes that I've done so far so let's get started shall we so I'm just going to go and grab my butter because just before we started I was like it is absolutely freezing in here and my butter even though I've had it out now for about an hour and a half is still rock hard so I'm just going to grab that and then we're going to get started so again we've got lots of hellos happy birthday Nikki King um, and yes we do have Laura back it is wonderful to see her Lee Carroll commented she be here so yes Laura is here I'm here <laughs> Covering myself in butter, but I'm here. Okay, grab my towel. So I've got here really just so I could plan and get everything organised and actually have some tea before I start. And time's just flown by, I don't know what I've been doing, but I've been all over the kitchen and managed to get everything out and then move it all into different places. So if you see me going up and down, it's because I forgot something. Um so as I said, we're going to start with the pastry base, and for that, we're going to start with 200 grams of plain flour. So this recipe is not a traditional Bakewell recipe, so I'll explain that now, just in case anybody's watching me do this and think that's not how I would do it. This is just one of my recipes that I do, and this is the way um, I like to make mine, so it's my own twist on it. Um, so a lot of the same ingredients, just done in a different way, um, mainly because it fits in with how I like it. <laughs> so um, 200 grams of plain flour I'm using for the pastry. So we're going to get that straight into a bowl to start with. If it wants to come out of my jar, come on. And I've not got my print out tonight, so all our recipes are available on the website to print off. Um, so it's just come up there at the bottom, www.sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.co.uk. But I can't find the charger for my laptop, so therefore I couldn't print it. So I've got everything on my phone, so if you see me on my phone, I'm not checking my messages. I'm just having a look at what is next um, to come. So... 200 grams of the plain flour in there and then we're going to add into that 
100 grams of softened butter. Get that nice and sugar out of there. So before I softened it, I probably should have weighed out how much I needed. It was just too hard for me to put into the pastry, so. Claire Hardyman says, I can't make pastry. I have to get my mum to make it. <laughs> well, not after today. No, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than what people think. I think a lot of things, people put themselves off in baking. And I get this all the time with, with my friends that only do a little bit and they're like, oh, I can't, I couldn't do that, you know, it's too difficult. But there's always a way to find something that works a bit easier for you. So this is just... Excuse me. Husband's ringing me already. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Okay, so the 100 grams of butter's going into our flour bowl. And then to that, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of salt. And then I'm going to add in two teaspoons of caster sugar. Just, in just to give it a little bit of sweetness. And then we're just gonna mix that all together using our fingers so normally I would just have the butter out of the fridge so it's not too still like holding some of its shape but not too soft um, that we, we're just squeezing it through too quickly I think with pastry you just need to take your time with it don't rush it so just get it in, in the bowl and just mix it in um, gently like this Harlem Horses is just asking what this recipe is called on the website. So on the website it is called Whipping It Up a Bake Well Tray Bake. So I've just called it, um, so it's called a Bake Well Tray Bake because it does contain almonds in the sponge. Um, but I didn't want to name it Cherry Bake Well because I want you to be able to use any flavour that you wish to make this. So. It's just that bake well idea for any flavour that you want to. And it works really well with flavours like, so what the one that I made earlier, I've made raspberry and white chocolate. Um, this one's going to be raspberry ripple. You can use any really. We've done a vanilla one in the past. It's just entirely up to you. So use any flavour that you wish. So we just want to get it so that all that butter's mixed in into little breadcrumbs. But Tex has just gone through to my husband who's so ringing me on my live to ask me if the dogs have been fed. <laughs> I have told him twice that the dogs have been fed, but does he listen? <laughs> no chance. Okay, so when you've got that fine crumb, like little bread crumbs, then that's when we can start to add the water. So I'm just gonna give my I'm just gonna give my hands a quick wipe because Mandy Harvey says she always uses icing sugar in her pastry. It gives it flavour too. Yes, she can. Yeah, you can. So good idea. <laughs> okay. And are you using cold or warm or hot water in the pastry next? Um, I so I just use cold water. So we're just going to add in um, roughly three to four tablespoons of water. Just grabbing a bigger spoon. Just grabbing a bigger spoon. <laughs> Always, I, I use the spoon <laughs> for my tea. Okay, so I would just start with two tablespoons first of all, and then just use a palette knife or a knife just to chop that through. It takes a bit of time to come together. So again, don't rush it, just go with it. So just chop it through like that. And then 
then we're going to add in our third tablespoon. And it's amazing with pastry that how much little water that you do need and then all, all of a sudden it just starts to come together so you've got the butter in there remember so that will help to um, absorb it all together with the flour that we've got in there and put in that last tablespoon and again just chop that through get your hands back in there and just start to bring it all together to form the dough. So we just need to squidge it together. Mandy Harvey and Kath Harrison have said they stick theirs in their food processor. It's yeah. done in seconds. If I wasn't using the mitzvah for something else, I probably would, but I'm just going to show you the old school way. I mean, it's come together quite quickly anyway. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's... So we just need to give it a few little roll and knead. And you just also another thing with pastry is that you don't, don't want to keep messing with it for too long. You just want it to come together and then leave it alone. Okay, so normally if I was doing this in a tart dish, I wouldn't bother putting any paper in the bottom of my pan. But because this is going to um, form part of a tray bake where we're putting a sponge on top of it it's just easier for later on to lift it out for um, when we're going to put the decoration on it so I'm just going to take a bit of paper I'm just using a normal brown tin tray bake size so I think these are roughly 8 by 8 not very good with my measurements but I think they're all the same, roughly the same size. This is my oldest one, as you can tell. <laughs> it's had lots of use. So I'm just cutting into the corners there all the way round, just to make it easier to put it in my tray. And then the corners should tuck behind the two middle sections. Okay, and then where's those scissors gone? And then I'm just going to neaten it up because we're going to put the pastry in here. I don't want these big flaps at the sides getting away, so I'm just going to cut them down so that they're level with my baking tray. Thank you, Debbie Harvey, for sharing that recipe to the comments as well. Neaten this last bit. Okay, so next we're going to roll out our dough. Don't really want to wet the surface too much. I'll just put that over there and then we'll give it a wipe in a second. So with a rolling pin, we're just going to roll this out very gently. You don't really want to be using any flour because you're just going to, again, dry out your dough, which we don't want to do. But just keep rolling and turning it around. And we're just looking to get it roughly the same sort of size as our tin. We don't want it too thick because we're just adding a little layer to the bottom, but we don't want a thick base. This is much easier on my worktop than on this material. What is this? What's it called that's on the... I think it's vinyl, isn't it? Vinyl, yeah. Or it's... 
So a nice cold worktop works a lot better than this. In fact, it might not be vinyl because it looks like photography paper. Is it photography paper? Yeah. Yeah. Not pastry paper. <laughs> <laughs> not working so well. But yeah, and pastry always normally works better on a nice cold worktop. So. So I just want enough so that I can get a little bit of a edge around my tin. this paper. Do you want me to push the tray in for you? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So it makes a bit more sense why I didn't want the paper to be too high up at the sides. So we're just going to bend it into shape. And the good part, the thing about when you're making a pastry case with like the sponge that's going to go inside, you're not going to see. So it doesn't need to be all pretty and perfect because our sponge layer is going to go above. I'm just going to grab a little knife. And then I'm just going to trim around the edges. About halfway up the tin I'm going for. And then we'll fill in these little gaps. It's like, it's like anything, when I do it at home it always looks perfect. <laughs> and then I come here it's never the neatest. Well, so the little off cuts that you've got, just use them to fill in any little bits that where it's torn and you want it to neaten out. Claire Hardyman said that's good, that's good Laura, mine won't be pretty pastry. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is it doesn't have to be pretty as long doesn't as it tastes it, good. Yeah. As long as it's you've got that casing so the sponge I've got one over here. The sponge goes above it, so you're not going you're not going to see it until you've sliced it and you've got your slices, and that's when you're going to see it. So, um, careful you're sticking your head in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't want to see my roots, do you? Okay. So when we've got something that resembles this, then we're just going to give it a few little pricks all over can use a fork or a skewer and that just helps it from bubbling up when we cook it. So first of all what we're going to do is pop that in the fridge now for about 10-15 minutes while we get our filling ready and then we're going to bake this section um, with some beads and then we're going to come back to it. So I'm just going to put that in the fridge. This is uh, quite quick. Okay, so moving on to the filling. So as I said, we're using whipping it up for our filling tonight. So all the times that I've been here, I've never ever noticed that it's got a light on the top of this. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah, but I mean, we, it's don't, obvious. we don't turn it on because no. it creates a horrible creates. glare for the yeah. camera. <laughs> but I never knew it was there. Right, <laughs> down. To be fair, I don't think I would have noticed if I hadn't no. seen it from 
because I stare at it directly at yeah, the ring I, light. I'm looking at it from the top and I've just never seen it. <laughs> I accidentally put it on before though and I was like, ooh, look at that. Okay, so back to... Used all my bowls now already. This is me trying to be good, not using all the bowls. And then I use all the bowls. And I've got to do the washing up tonight. Either me or Antonia. I'll help. I'll dry. <laughs> if, if you wash, I'll dry. I'll, I'll, I'll wash you dry. <laughs> That's the rules in our household. I mean, normally it's one cooks, the other cleans. Well, I, I cook every night. I'm clean. I'm tidy up. Empty the dishwasher the lot. I need someone like that. Okay, so we're using um, the whipping it up. So I'm using 250 grams. I'm gonna get that weighed out in the mixing bowl first. So the whipping it up, Mandy Harvey has, um, it's pasteurized egg white, isn't it? Yeah, like, yes. Yeah. I was like, I don't wanna lead anyone astray because I am not the expert, um, <laughs> as opposed to icing sugar without. So whipping it up is a multi-mix, um, so, Laura, why whipping it up instead of just normal icing sugar for this recipe? So, um, I like to do everything easy. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone else struggles to buy eggs at the moment, but finding eggs at the moment near me has become a bit of a, mm -hmm. a mission. Thing. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> of a mission, that's the word. And uh, yeah, a lot of my recipes now, I use the whipping it up just because there's no waste with whipping it up because it already contains the egg in it I've not got to you know buy an extra ingredient so I've got my flavouring I've got my sugar and I've got my eggs all in one go so I'm using whipping it up because it's got everything that I need for this recipe and it means that I don't need to use as many ingredients so we're using 250 grams and that's going straight into the mixing bowl And then to that, I'm adding 150ml of water. So I'm just going to top that up because I'll use some. Ouch! Yeah, Elaine Lawton has said six eggs here yesterday were four pounds. Would you believe? Oh. Wow. Yeah, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> they best be good eggs. When we have eggs at, at the. Um, when we do have eggs, very rare that we have eggs at the weekend, but when we do, my husband's always like, oh, get some of those perfect. The the browner, whatever they're the expensive ones. I was like, have you seen how much they are? <laughs> I was like, we're having whatever eggs we can find. It's getting crazy. I have to admit though, I found I tried blue eggs for the first time, and I was actually really disappointed that it oh. just meant that the yolk was just a bit yolkier. Yeah, because yeah, I never ever had them really before. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh, amazing. And they were like five pounds for okay, six really eggs. Small as well. Yeah, not they safe. were not worth it. I was well disappointed. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, my husband's not having them. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep asking, but I'm just going to buy the normal eggs. Yeah, I didn't see much difference in. <laughs> okay, so we've got the 250 grams of whipping up in there now, and then 150 ml of the water so we're just going to put that on medium speed to get that whipping it up and then we're going to make our filling oh, so many people live by free range chicken farm eggs so yeah we've got loads of people on our road that, that sell eggs but they're just they're just going too quick because everybody's wanting eggs it is like, even with the people that have chickens on our road, everyone's like, they're there, they're up early, they're there getting the eggs. And I'm like, what about me? The early bird gets the egg. You can, you, yeah, exactly, you can't be reserving them, can you? Well, Karen Gatton, yeah, sorry, Karen, Carol Gatton B has said, I can bring you some eggs from the farm near me, Laura. Oh, so, very kind, Carol. <laughs> So I'm using, so, so again, this is my different way of using um, the jam filling for my bake well. So 
a lot of people just do the pastry base, then they do a jam layer, and then they do their sponge. Um, but I do it entirely different. So I've got 150 grams of jam. So I'm using raspberry jam. So if you're doing like strawberry milkshake, maybe you can use strawberry jam, um, whichever one you prefer. And then to that, I'm going to add in 50 grams of semolina, which is just ground semolina. And it just gives the, this just gives the sponge um, a different um, consistency. And it's, it's really nice. Just makes it a bit lighter, I think. And we're not actually using a lot, but the difference that it makes is massive, I think, personally. And I always have this stuff in because I'm always making pizzas at home. Um, but it is really handy in the baking. So 50 grams of the ground semolina. It is available, I couldn't find it in Aldi, I couldn't find it in Morrison's, but we do do it in Sainsbury's and Tesco's, just in case you were wondering. And then to that as well, we're going to add in 50 grams of ground almonds. If you don't want to add any nuts, then you could just substitute this for more semolina instead. But putting the almonds in just to get to lift the flavour so you get that bake well taste. I always have about ten half open bags of these for some reason, so there's one. Here's two. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't seem to look before I open up another packet. <laughs> so I'm making making use of them. Okay. And then we're just going to stir that together and break it into the raspberry jam. Feels like it's not going to go, then it's, then it's uh, I always think, oh, I'm going to have to add something else to it, but then it just, it just takes it then. So this makes up, so by adding the semolina and the ground almonds to the jam, when I add this into my sponge, it's going to form like a, a jammy sponge mm -hmm. inside my other sponge. If that makes sense. So um, you'll see it when I chop up the one that I did earlier. But I don't know about I don't know about you, but I know so many people that don't like jam because they don't like the texture of it. And I think this is where this started really when I first made a bakewell tart. And they were like, oh, if you did it without jam, I'd have some. And I get this with cake as well. If you did it without the jam. It'd be really nice. I'm like, what people got against jam? I don't. I really don't know. Just it just so much flavour is in there, isn't it? And the sweetness and all that. But putting this in and making it a sponge, they really like it. So if you've got any non-jam fans, you might actually be able to to turn them around. I'm just gonna look at my recipe again. So we've made our jam fillings. So we're just gonna pop that aside. And while the waking it up is still going, we're going to get our other ingredients ready for um, the next stage. So, where's my... So, we need 100 grams more of the butter. <laughs> I agree, Claire. Claire Corbett says, absolute heathens. Jam is the best. Jam is the best, yeah. I made a cake at the weekend and they were like, is it is there jam in it? And they did request no jam. And they were like, why well, have not put jam in it? And it's like, we, they didn't want jam. But they're one person and probably about 50 that don't, doesn't want jam in a cake. Mm. 
but I feel like it's not really anything I can change, is it? They either want the jam or they don't, but One always in my, my case, always have jam. One slice marked out, no jam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, I've done that corner for you with no jam in it. <laughs> okay, well, 100 grams of softened butter. Just going in there. So I'm going to put back in that butter bowl. And then we're going to weigh out for our cake sponge 185 grams of plain flour again. Set off the jam conversation over oh, here. <laughs> well, I always do that, especially with like scones. <laughs> I like cream first, then the jam on top. I don't like I don't like it when it it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. If the jam goes on first and then the cream, so it has to be cream first and then jam. That's another debate that people are really big on. <laughs> just, to, just to add to the fire. Well, they're saying seeded or seedless or... No, oh, I don't mind. Don't mind on the seeds. Don't mind if it's an expensive jam, cheap jam. All jam is good. Now we're saying jam on toast. No, no jam on toast. That's Marmite and oh, honestly, no. <laughs> jam, jam on toast. We've got everything over here. Jam on bagels, jam in scones, jam in cakes. Okay, so 185 grams of flour's in there and then we're going to add to that um, half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Who's gone again? <laughs> they're, they're all uh, disagreeing with you with the scones, though. All going. No! Yeah. You make you make a scone. You get a scone and put the jam on, and the cream just does not look nice. <laughs> you want that? You want that red jam on the top? Looks so much nicer. Somebody's got to agree with me. It's always one. So half a teaspoon of the bicarbonate with the flour, just give that a little stirring. And then we're going to put that aside. So now we've got our 100 grams of butter, we've got our jam filling and then we've got our flour there. So as I said before, using the whipping it up, that's got our sugar, it's got our flavouring and it's got our eggs. So we don't need anything else. That's everything that we're going to use for the cake. This up. Bit more. So we're just looking to get some nice peaks in this. So it should have doubled in size, nice and creamy. So I'm just going to give that another minute. So scrape down the sides because if you don't scrape down the sides, you do find that you get a lot of the. I don't know where to put this. I'm going to have to go there. A lot of the whipping it up just sticks to the side and then it doesn't blend in when we scrape it out later. So, another quick whip. You really have to have this on the <laughs> You've been taking it right off track. Let's, let's come back to the bake well. Back to the bake well. Come on back. All these jams are made, and new ways to have jam as well. Someone said butter and jam on meat of it. Oh, I've seen, I've seen that on the on the advert. I've never heard I've anyone before. eat dry wheat it, but no. <laughs> to be fair, I that really struggle. Cool. I struggle with wheat bits. Full stop. Yeah, not dry wheat bits. Okay, so I'm just going to scrape this down again. It's smelling good as well. Yeah, the ras raspberry mm. ripple, it's just... You can't not lick the whisk. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to every time, but I do. Okay. Need another bowl. You really do run out of bowls, don't you? I do. Because <laughs> I'm trying to show it all at one time, but if I was at home, 
following my recipe, I'd just wash the bowl. <laughs> I do wash bowls. <laughs> At home, I use like two bowls today. But when I'm here, it's just like you need another bowl so you can show what you're doing. So I need to use the mixing bowl again. So I'm just going to transfer the whipping it up. And it should look all nice and thick and glossy. Into this bowl. So you don't need to clean out the bowl, just scrape it out as much as you can and then we're going to add in our other ingredients. Okay, so before I do, do that, I'm just going to go back to our pastry. So I'm going to grab the pastry back out. Yeah, they're all just talking about jam, so there's not much point me reading <laughs> half these <laughs> So, going back to our pastry, our pastry's been in the fridge now, so when, when you take it out, you should be able to um, place your fingers in and it should be firm to the touch. So that's how we want to use it to bake it. So I'm just going to use a piece of paper that I cut out earlier when I made my uh, other one. And I'm just going to cover over the top of the pastry and we're just going to blind bake it for 10 minutes so the oven is on already and um, set on 160 degrees i'm going to use my old baking beans so if you don't have any baking beans you can just use some rice oh really yeah yeah huh. it's heavy isn't it and it doesn't um it, you know when it's when rice is in the oven it just Days is exactly the same, and I always, I always bake it, and then we use it. I'll stick it in a stir fry or something like that, and it's always absolutely fine. So spread them out like that, and Wish then we're going to place that in the oven. <laughs> Be looking for your baking beads. Can we find them? Yeah. Not that I bake that often, but it was one of the first things I actually bought because in school when we did food tech way back they when, always use them, don't they? Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a must-have. They never told us an alternative way. So, <laughs> right, let's pop that there. Don't move, don't move. So I'm just going to change my whisk back to to a beater. So um, I think I said the oven's on 160. Preheated it before we started. So I'm just going to blind bake the pastry. So because it's going to have time to bake as well while we've got the sponge in there. I'm just going to give it five minutes now, and then I'm going to take the beans out and let it get a little bit of colour um, again when we take it out after five minutes. Um, take the beans out and bake it again, and then we're going to add the sponge and it'll finish baking with the sponge. So while we're waiting for that, to the mixing bowl, we're going to add in the 100 grams of softened butter. We just need to beat that down a little bit. So we just want that to be nice and creamy. And then we're going to add in our flour to this mixture. So in here was 185 grams of plain flour and then half a teaspoon of the bicarbonate of soda and that's just going to help with the rise. Well as 
couple of minutes. And just check from here. I've not missed anything. So yeah, as I said before, this recipe is on the website already, and it's um, on without the pastry, the pastry base. So traditionally, Bakewell tart would have a pastry base. Um, I've done this recipe before where I've just done it as a sponge cake, um, as a tray baked sponge cake, and but I just thought I'd give you the option. So some people like the pastry base with it and some people don't, so it's entirely up to you. But if you're not doing it with the pastry base, you just start with the whipping it up and then continue through. Um, but when you add the jam mixture you're going to add it exactly the same way so you still line your tin you add um, everything that I'm going to add to the sponge exactly the same way so you get that layer of jam in between the base and the top of your bake well talk to the kitchen equipment was it just me I, I do it all the time I'm like come on come on you can do it I talk to most inanimate objects <laughs> <laughs> including my car yeah <laughs> I was like Chan, come on you can do it go right <laughs> come on mix and the thing is when you're doing a live there's just so much time like if I was if I was at home now baking I'd be like right, I'm just going to put a wash on I was going to do this and just move that, but when you're on a live, you, you, you just can't. You just got to go, wait, wait, try and fill a bit of a time. <laughs> Maybe we should do a live like that. Like, come on, practical come on. baking, doing chores with space. Yeah. <laughs> so now I do, I'll get a wash on, make sure the dishwasher's empty, stack it up, clean my bowl so I can reuse it. <laughs> Helen Miles is also in team talk to inanimate objects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My husband thinks I'm crazy. Sometimes he walks in, I'll be like, yes, you've done well, haven't you? Look at you. Ooh, you look good. And he's like, are you talking to him? Like, we jam. <laughs> Who else? that way Laura that's from Claire Hardiman yeah. and Lindsay Pearson says you make me laugh <laughs> I'm a crazy person <laughs> but crazy is good I believe makes you far more interesting I think we've got a second birthday in here as well today. Happy birthday, Angela Black, as well as Nikki King. Thank you. 
Sorry Angela, she just said no, not my birthday. So whoever started that off. <laughs> well, happy half birthday or whenever your birthday is. <laughs> yeah, if, if we forget on your actual birthday, we've already said it. <laughs> We're just way ahead. Okay, so just be very careful in taking your beans out. So I'm just going to pop them back in their little cup. make sure that you do leave them to cool down before you put the lid on. So the pastry has started to cook a little bit, um, so putting the beans in just helps it not to lift too much. So I'm just going to pop that back in now and give it another couple of minutes while we finish the sponge and then it'll finish baking when we bake it all together. So we just want to get it a little bit of the way, otherwise it won't get any colour if we just stick the sponge in there straight away. You know what Claire, I hadn't looked at the cupcake colour development from last week but actually Laura if you wouldn't mind showing these when you get a chance as well. Um, yeah they have, they've developed really quite well, you can really see the colours cutting and punching through one another. So I don't know whether to show, should we show people or not? Because it was in the Make It, Bake It, Decorate It group last Wednesday where um, Claire was showing, well she did piping theory and colour theory last yeah. week. Yeah, you can show the, the colours. Let's get them, we'll, give them, we'll get these out while we're waiting for our pastry to finish. So. There we go. They do look a lot brighter, don't, mm, don't they? Much, much brighter. So don't ask me what colours are on here. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a board down there that might possibly yeah, say. They're all um, bespoke colours. Yeah, so the idea of this is matching matching the colours that work best together, isn't it? So yeah, I really like this one, the colours on that. You can't not say that their colour pop colours don't pop, can you? Mm-hmm. But yeah, they're really pretty. And I think it's really nice how the colour develops more because it's like a bit of a, you know, ooh, yeah, look at that. Well, especially on the more neutral palette, that yeah. grey is now cutting through against the yeah. dark grey slash black. Can you see that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See all the colours there. Really pretty. So yeah, they do look great. Good job, Claire. Go Thanks, the Laura. Of the way. Put those back away. So I don't know what's going on with my butter. I don't know whether it's because it's chilly, but it normally just comes together <laughs> a lot more than this. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the water. We don't want it to form a dough like the pastry formed a dough, we just want it to close in so it's not an actual powder as such. But yeah, just adding a little bit of water is not going to affect it in any way. I feel like my mitts has turned round a little bit, that's probably me taking it on and off. So we just want it to come together just a little touch more. There we go, that looks better. Or is it still not quite? It just doesn't look as fine now. Yeah, it is coming a bit more. So we should be able to... Yeah, I can work with it. I'm just wondering whether I put it in another way, made it weighed out enough butter. But I'm pretty sure that I did. Yeah, you did. I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm questioning my, myself because I've made two today. I've made two of these bake wells already so I could practice doing my icing. Just 
don't want to have those crumbs go through my um, whipping it up. I just want it to be a little bit more to get it look right and go now. That's more like Yeah, it. you can see the difference now, can't you? Yeah. Just give that a little bit of so it's a little bit doughy and then when we start adding the whipping it up mixture it breaks through again but we don't want you don't want those fine crumbs if that makes sense so we're going to put in one third of the whipping it up from the bowl and just start off with your spatula mixing it in a little bit get all over it and then we're going to add that back into there. So the more we add the liquid up the more looser it's going to become more back to life. And again we're going to add in another third, so half of what's left. Can you see that? I'm a bit off centre around. Right it's alright, you can see it. Just got me, just got me. <laughs> so why do you do it a little bit at a time? Just so that it mixes in with um, eat more evenly because if we just because it's like a doughy texture almost the, the flour and the butter if we just put all the whipping it up and we're going to lose all the air and um, we're going to lose the whipping it up's going to shrink back a little bit we don't want to lose it entirely <laughs> so if we just add it it just it just mixes a lot a lot better with it so again just mixing that next section that there while I check the pastry again. Sheila Harvey, better late than never. Um, Laura is making a raspberry ripple bakewell tray bake. Yeah, got it. Got it in one. Bit of a long winded name. To be fair, yeah. we could have just called it a whipping it up bakewell tray bake, could, tray bake couldn't we? Because you can use any you can flavour, use any flavour that you want. Yeah, we've just opted for raspberry ripple. I say wait, Laura. Laura. <laughs> well, <you laughs> the <know>. royal way. <laughs> so just give that again, quick fold through. I'm just going to put it in on for our last mitts on the mixer. And I'm going to get the pastry out of the oven. Pastry's out now, so that's ready for our sponge to go on top of. Now normally, 
I would leave this to cool down a little bit before I add the sponge but we haven't got that time so we're just going to go with it so I'm just going to pop that aside while we just wait for our mixture And then just do a final scrape down. We'll just give it one final stir so we can make sure that everything's mixed in. Claire Hardiman says whipping it up in a sponge is just some kind of sorcery. <laughs> it definitely is. So we've got our whipping it up filling and we've got our jam filling. So you're going to need both now. So as I said in the recipe, leave this to cool down a little bit, just like 10 minutes on the side. And um, I would normally do the pastry and then when that's ready and cool, I start the rest of it. But we're live and you have not got time to wait and watch me do my jobs. So <laughs> we're just going to go straight ahead. So it probably will look like it's melting a little bit. So we're going to start with about a third of the mixture. So pour that in. Spread it out into your corners. And then we're going to go and put our jam filling in. So while it's been sat on the side, it does stiffen up a little bit. So if you just give it another little stir, just to loosen it a little bit. And then we're just going to blob that on. Into the sponge. spread it a little bit so it's covering so that every slice will have some of the jammy filling so it doesn't matter so much if you get in the sponge mixture mixed in with it because you're going to top it anyway like that and then we're going to put the remainder on the top So I'm going to decorate this tonight but if you don't like a lot of icing then what you could do is just chuck some flaked almonds on the top of this now and then when it's baked serve it with some icing sugar on the top or just do you know a very gentle drizzle of icing um, you know like drizzle of icing on the top if you don't like a lot so spread it all out so you can't see your jam. And then we're going to put that back in the oven now for roughly 25 minutes to 30 minutes for it to bake through. So I'll pop that back in. Okay, let's move some bits out the way. staging area. No one sees the mess. Does it look, look tidy? It does look tidy. <laughs> and this is what it should look like when it's baked. So before you decorate it I would take it out of um, the tin 
So as I said before, putting it in the paper just means that it's easier to lift down. And then um, I'll just flip it over so you can see the pastry bottom. So we've got a nice mm. pastry crust at the bottom there. So the pastry does actually go up the sides, but because the sponge has leaked over it, you can't really see. So that's what I was saying about it doesn't need to be nice and pretty because all you can see is the base. Anyway, so we've, we've got a nice cooked base there. So we've done the different stages throughout to make sure that it's baked to the right temperature. So, um, sorry, Sandra Freeman is asking, could you put more of the jam filling in? Yeah, you, could, you can do if you want to. I'll show you this when it's sliced up. It does seem to be enough because depending on what jam you use and with the almonds and the semolina, it is quite a rich flavour that's coming through it so um but i'll show you that we'll we'll ice this and then we'll slice it up and then you can see and yes it does smell amazing in this kitchen right now <laughs> okay so um so i bet i'm best put an alarm on that before i forget that it's running Michelle Quinn is um, impressed with your lack of a soggy bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think it's just like the stages, you know, doing it with the baking beans and then without, just for a little bit, just to get that bit of crispiness and then baking it with the sponge just finishes it off. So for the topping, there's, as I said, there's a couple of different things. So if you're not mad on a topping, you could just have... Um, chuck some flaked almonds on there which I sometimes do and then I just make a bit of a runny icing and just drizzle it across um, I'm going to do a full covering on this and then I'm going to um, slice it up so have I got another bag of this yes I have this one here okay so I'm just going to use um, the whipping it up again so the whipping it up because it is a multi mix with the egg white in you do get a um a harder um royal icing crust on the top which i think for this kind of dessert where you want to slice it up and you want it to be a bit neater then this sets a lot better so it still takes a bit of time but when you're just doing it with just icing it does tend to um still be a bit wet and runny after long after you've drizzled it on top so I'm going to use the royal icing but again as I'm live I am going to cut it before it's set so I'm going to put in here 100 grams which is exactly what I've got in the bag amazing and then I'm going to just add in a little bit of water I don't really ever measure out the amount of water that I use because I think depending on if you're like me when I'm at home I don't always do the exact measurements I just go oh yeah that looks about enough don't ever waste stuff out <laughs> I do when it's a recipe like this but not for icing normally I just whack some in and and start um messing around with it but um if you just start off slow just add a little bit of, at a time then you you know that you've got more chance of getting that consistency that you want. And I need another spoon. <laughs> Obviously. And the amount of times I would have washed this spoon at home. Okay, so less is more, just a little bit of icing. So I'm just going to do like a bit of a feather, traditional Bakewell feather design on the top of this so I'm just going to use white and then I'm going to use some of the um, colour pop pink candy this stuff is also I don't I don't know how many of you actually make gingerbread houses at Christmas or gingerbread in fact but um, I know a lot of people use royal icing for 
um, their cookies and things like that. But this on a ginger to use as glue for gingerbread house is a lifesaver. For years I've tried to just use normal royal icing and you know to stick my gingerbread house together and it just collapses non stop but this um I've been using for the last two years now. I think for the kids' gingerbread houses and this year I made twenty two gingerbread wow. houses because <laughs> <laughs> Somehow managed to get into a thing of making them for everybody, everyone's kids. But I do really enjoy it. So, but I needed a good glue, and I bought some gingerbread glue, and it did half a house. So, once this whip, we started with this whipping it up. I was like lifesaver. So next Christmas, I know we're a bit way ahead. Next Christmas, junior gingerbread houses. We need to use this. Oh, we kind of have it all. It's the gingerbread flavoured icing sugar as well, and there are the winter flavours. There, there is in the icing sugar, but not in the whipping it up. I've used the biggest bowl to do this, and it looks like the tiniest amount ever that I'm scraping around <laughs> in it. So I just want a reasonably um, runny consistency because I want to be able to get it all over my um, bakewell. I may have to make a little touch more for my pink. So I'll we'll pop that aside and then we'll get another bowl. <laughs> we should have a tally for these bowls, shouldn't Honestly. we? <laughs> Feel like I need somebody here just going bowl, bowl, spoon, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I should just get 50 out of everything, but I'll, I'll still use it. So, <laughs> so if you're doing a feathering design and you want to use another colour, you don't. You're not going to need as much. Um, so we'll just use about 30 grams. Of that. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Only seven months before Christmas. Only seven months, but you, but you already know what you're going to use for your gingerbread glue. Don't forget our reminder. I make mine all on the week, a couple of days before Christmas. We have the kids do I do a few different stages now with different kids coming round to make their gingerbread houses. <laughs> What a fun activity though. It is. It's, I, 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 you know, I've never made myself one, but I should do because I always have this overwhelming feeling of wanting to do the kids. And they're like, no, I'm doing it. And they get all the fun. of a teaspoon we'll go for to start with. Only one, I don't want a too deep a colour. Teeny weeny bit of that. Bright one. Mm. Which one did I choose? Candy pink. Pink candy, yeah. Well, you can't say it's not, can you? <laughs> so you see how much you, you don't need a lot, do you? At all. It's the fact that you saw that instant change then, though. No. <laughs> no, no. I couldn't remember. I've got loads of colours out before and I couldn't really remember which one I'd chosen. <laughs> 
Right, I'm hoping that's going to be enough. And this is going to be enough. May need to make a little bit more of the white. So I'll just chuck in a little bit more of like that. Just in case. Let me weigh in it with the spoon now. If I was at home, I would be. <laughs> I have to be all prim and proper when I'm here. Okay. So I've got my steel ready. There. It's the only one that I could find. Massive waffle one. <laughs> it must be weird coming into a different kitchen to your own, though, to do it. Well, it is because I can't find anything. <laughs> And where I bake, everything's behind me. So if I need a spoon, it's just there. Here. My hob's there. My dishes are here. So I don't I wouldn't act, you you wouldn't know that I'd gone. You wouldn't even know I'd gone to get anything else because it'd just be there. <laughs> My mixer's different. The oven's different. So yeah, I come, I come here, and I've not obviously not practiced here either. I've just got to hope, hope for the best. Everything works the same way. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. But that is life. <laughs> okay, that is really satisfying to watch. I'm hoping that it's going to be enough, enough to spread out. I think we should be okay. We should be good. So Antonio was asking me before who I give everything, all my baits to when I leave here and I've got like three of them or four of them for the different stages and I was like don't worry, I've normally got a few messages before I've left about where I can drop it off. <laughs> Nothing ever gets wasted that's for sure. It's because you come with all the different stages. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a Blue Peter thing isn't it, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> So I'm actually going to put my pink in a piping bag. If you don't have to, you can just blob it on. I'm trying to get some lines. I did actually get this out. So this, so this is amazing, but I don't have one of these. But this is what I normally do when I'm pouring it in a bag. <laughs> hold it with my head and scrape it in like that because I haven't got enough arms. But when I come here, I get to use this. Which when this when there's two of these in the kitchen, one will be coming home. So it makes life so much easier. I don't have to use my forehead. My forehead always ends up with something on it. No, no one ever mentions it when I go and pick the kids up from school and I've got icing sugar on my head or a bit of colouring or a bit of this, a bit of that. No one says anything. They just accept it. Well, you've got lots of laughing faces for that there, so that is just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> what I was doing at home today. Okay, so I'm just going to drizzle cross yeah actually that's a point D Wheeler there's a brown one and a blue one as well so ask your mum where she got two I don't know if they're she in the kitchen, one. but she did definitely bring some in the other week yeah 
so. See if there's any need cocktail stick really for it set. Is Claire watching? Does she know where the cocktail stick? Claire, <laughs> do you know where the cocktail sticks are? <laughs> so a cocktail stick makes it much easier, and I, I, I have a very shaky. Um, Carol is on holiday. Sheila Harvey. She's in Tenerife. Tenerife, yeah. I think I went a bit deep there on those bits. But... Right, so as I said, I would leave that to set now, but I'm going to go straight ahead and chop it up. And I can at least show you inside. So if you leave that to set and you do it with a cocktail stick so it looks a bit prettier, I think that was just a little bit a little bit too jaggery for my liking, then it will be much neater. And the one that I baked tonight, I'll do with a cocktail stick at home. So I just want to show you the inside. So I would chop this up. Um I like a big portion, so I would do I would do nine, but I'm gonna give this away tomorrow, so I'm gonna do it a little bit smaller. I'm going to chop through here because I keep being told that my portions are just a little bit on the big side. <laughs> but I'm just trying to be friendly, <laughs> give you a good amount. This is going to be given away to the school tomorrow. So let's get the piece out. So can you see? Did they go on the front camera there? The jammy bit at the front here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Too. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Front camera. Yeah, you can see the split. Oh, I was waiting for you to like zoom in. No, I can't. Can't. Wait, wait, wait there. Go for that one. Here. You can see. Down a bit, down a bit, down, 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 so you, down. You've got your pastry there. layer. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing. So you've got the pastry layer at the bottom, and you've got that jam section running through, and then you've got your sponge on top. And then, if the icing was set, it would be, it wouldn't drag through, if, you, if that makes sense. So it does. It doesn't look like you're putting loads of jam in, but then if you, if I go all the way around, you can see that there's a, a jammy part. All the way around there. And that, and that is it. Well, lots of love hearts coming in. Lots of compliments saying the stickiest looks delish. Sticky hands, the stickiest hands ever. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I hope that you've enjoyed it, I hope that you give it a go and as I said before you can miss the pastry bit if you if you want, sometimes I do it with pastry bits, sometimes I don't, depends who I'm doing it for, um, but yeah I just wanted to show you the pastry bit and if you want to make it in a tart dish you can, it works really well, it just be um, slightly less depth on it on it um because this is obviously the tray bake size so in a dish it would be a little bit thinner and then the royal icing i would personally let it set a little bit before um you slice it just so you get that neat finish and um yeah a couple of things that i need to let you know before we go tonight so a little bit finished a little bit early but i never know how long it's going to take 
Um, but a few things that um, my mum, Carol, wanted me to mention is that um, icing sugars, the summer flavours, coconut and lime, strawberry, daiquiri and fruity toots are all um, back in stock this week. And then velvet vanilla in all sizes, raspberry and white chocolate, pina colada and the raspberry ripple, um, they're all going to be back in Tuesday, Wednesday this week. So it's Monday today, so either tomorrow or Wednesday they'll all be back in stock. Um, this week the only other live is on Wednesday with Claire Corbett and that's in the Make It Bake It um, Decorate It group. So if you're in that group, Claire will be there on Wednesday. Next week, we've oh, there's nobody in this Thursday. Carol and John are away, so we haven't got anybody in this Thursday. Um, next week, we've got the bank holiday on Monday. So enjoy that, everybody is having an extra day off. And um, I'll be in on Wednesday for Claire. And then again, there's no one in on the Thursday. So it's just me next week. I'm going to be back in making a fruity tiramisu i put two recipes on the website one for the traditional tiramisu made with coffee and then i've done a fruity version i know that coffee is a bit of a marmite flavor for most people but i absolutely love a tiramisu whatever flavor it is so i thought i'll show you how to um make both and then you've got the option then of having your coffee version and you've got your fruity version so most of the the ingredients are very similar, but we're just changing it up for um, the filling, um, flavouring, and this obviously fruit one's got a bit more added, added fruit. <laughs> Coffee's got none. Not sure how well that would work out with coffee and fruit together, but we're doing two individual ones. So I'm back in next Wednesday for that live. And um, what else do I need to tell you? And then we've got the King's Coronation and then another bank holiday and then I'm not sure who's in that week after but um, Carol and John are back so I'm sure they're going to have loads of different plans um, this one on Bakewell that's in the oven now I'm going to get that out tonight I'll take it home and then I'll decorate it tomorrow so I'll show you on the Facebook page how that one came out so you can see um, I'll do a different design on that one and then I'll show slice this one up and take some better pictures <laughs> when it's set um but yeah thank you all for joining me tonight thank you antonia for doing thank comments you. on the camera um and thank you to all of you for joining us tonight i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to share your pictures if you do have a go i'd love to see them and i will be back next wednesday the 4th of may so thank you everybody and see you soon bye bye <laughs>